Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and I'm an Adobe After Effects user of seven years. My most popular series on my YouTube channel is when I create various TikTok accounts and I use After Effects to make a ton of edits for these accounts. These videos basically demonstrate how someone can become viral on TikTok in just one week through their edits. For vertically formatted fan edits commonly seen on TikTok, there's a certain edit recipe that can be followed to increase your chances of going viral and ultimately growing your TikTok account. So today I'm partnering with Adobe Video to share how to master this viral fan edit formula, of course using my favorite program, Adobe After Effects. So if you're looking to make a successful video edit of your favorite celebrity, TV show, series, maybe even a friend or family member, just keep on watching and I'll show you how using Adobe After Effects. So let's start off by making a vertically formatted composition. This is going to have a width of 1080 pixels and a height of 1920. Now I'm going to import our media and now I'm going to arrange the media on my timeline. Leave some empty space at the beginning of the timeline because we're going to add some text effects at the end. Although I'm not editing with an audio today, you can actually mark beats on the timeline to make cutting your clips more efficient. Next, to slow down our clips and achieve a velocity effect, we can use a feature called time remapping. To enable this feature, you want to right click on your clip and go up to time, then toggle over to enable time remapping. We want to add two time keyframes, one at the very beginning of the clip and also one at the very end. Now I'm not going to adjust the first keyframe because I want my video clip to start right here, but we are going to decrease the time value of our second keyframe. As you decrease, you're going to see the video reverse a bit, and this is because it is slowing down. Now we're going to easy ease our two time keyframes, then head on over to your graph editor. We're going to be using a value graph for this, so you can click on this icon right here to make sure that you are editing value graph. We're going to pull this first part of the graph up and to the left, and then bring this other part the opposite direction down and to the right. I'm going to condense the graph a little bit more just to make sure it's not too intense. And as you're about to see, the clip starts off fast, starts slowing down, and then starts speeding up again at the end. To make this look even smoother, we can add an effect called CC Force Motion Blur to our clip. All right, I followed the same recipe for the rest of my clips, so now they're all in slow motion. And to all of them, we're gonna enable frame blending, which is right next to the motion blur icon. And just like the force motion blur, this makes our velocity even smoother. Now let's add some transform animations to our clips. After Effects actually has a new properties panel, so we can edit our transform keyframes right here. The main animation we see with TikTok velocity edits is usually scale, which consists of zooming in and out. Let's start with the zoom in pan. At the beginning of your clip, add a keyframe for scale and keep it at 100. Then at the end of the clip, we're going to increase the scale. This increase really depends on the length of your clip, but I like to keep it between 120 and 130. Now easy ease these scale keyframes. And now we're just gonna space these keyframes out so that they go past the beginning and end of the clip. Now it's very subtle, but here's the pan forward, and it'll look even better when we pair it with the zoom out on the next clip. So this is gonna be the opposite of what we did to the first clip. We're still gonna add our keyframes at the beginning and the end, but now we're gonna increase the scale of the first keyframe instead of the second one. Now easy ease your keyframes and spread them out. So here's a zoom in followed by a zoom out. So now let's do a method where we combine this very slow and subtle pan with a more fast and intense one at the end of the clip. So I'm first going to add a null object layer to my timeline and I'm going to connect it to the clip that you're seeing on screen right now. So now I have the transform settings open on the null object layer. Towards the end of the clip, I'm going to add a scale keyframe at 100. Then at the end of the clip, I'm going to decrease the scale from anywhere between 70 and 80. Make sure to easy ease these keyframes. Now go to your graph editor and we're going to do an in graph where we pull this knob up and this knob to the right. We want to make this graph really tight and compact so that the transition is fast. To get rid of the black space, we're going to add an effect called Motion Tile to our clip, increase the output width and height to 200, and enable mirror edges. So now for the next clip, we need to have it coming out of this transition. I'm going to start by adding Motion Tile to this clip since I know we're going to need it. Click on the Properties panel and keyframe the scale at the very beginning of your clip. We're going to zoom this out again between 70 and 80. Then move your time indicator just a couple frames forward and bring your scale back to 100. Easy ease these keyframes. And now we're going to do an out graph. Same concept as the last graph, but instead of pushing everything to the right, we are going to push it to the left. Now you should have a transition that looks like this. Obviously it's really fast, but that's because we still need to add our slow panning to this clip right here. So just like before, add a null object layer to your timeline and connect it to your clip. Using the properties panel for the null object, you're gonna keyframe the scale at the beginning and the end of the clip. Because we're doing a zoom in, we want the clip to continue to move forward. So we wanna increase the scale value for the second keyframe rather than the first one. Easy ease these keyframes. And since this is the slow pan, we're just gonna space out the keyframes instead of adding a graph. 
So now this is what all of our scaling animation looks like. Now let's add some flashes to our clips. We're gonna do so by adding an effect called brightness and contrast. At the very beginning of your clip, you wanna add a keyframe for brightness. And depending on the original brightness of your clip, you can increase the brightness anywhere between 80 and 150. Then at the end of the clip, you're gonna keyframe your brightness again and bring it down to zero. Last step is to just easy ease these keyframes. And this gives your clip a flash effect. Now we can just copy these two keyframes and then paste them at the beginning of the rest of our clips. <laughs> As you can see, that was super quick and easy. Now we're gonna add some transition layers between each clip. We're gonna start with the transition between these two clips. So we're gonna add everything on top of them. So first we're gonna add a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna crop this adjustment layer to be shorter so that we only see it at the point where the two clips merge. On the adjustment layer, we're gonna add a blur effect. There's two that I really like to use, the first one being camera lens blur. When we add it to the adjustment layer, it gives a very basic Gaussian blur. At the beginning of your adjustment layer, add a keyframe for blur radius and make this zero. Then bring your time indicator to where the beat hits and make this blur radius between 20 and 30. Then bring your time indicator to the end of the adjustment layer and bring this blur back to zero. Let's easy ease these keyframes. I'm now going to switch from value graph to speed graph. This first curve is going to be an in graph, so we're going to push it to the right. You don't want to push it all the way, you want it to be kind of a softer curve. And then this part right here is going to be an out graph, so we're going to push it to the left. And this is the ending graph formation. The other blur I like to use is called directional blur. And we're gonna use the same exact method with keyframe placement and graph formation. So beginning of the adjustment layer, add a keyframe for blur length at zero. Then when the beat hits, you wanna increase the blur length to anywhere between 80 and 120. Then at the end of the adjustment layer, bring your blur length back to zero. Now I'm gonna easy ease and add the exact same graphs as before. And lastly, we can change the direction of the blur. Right now it's at zero degrees, so it's vertical, but if you change it to 90, the blur will be horizontal. Since this is a vertical style edit, I'm gonna stick to zero degrees. And here's what that directional blur looks like. And pro tip, we can actually save these blurs as presets for later use. Just highlight the keyframes, go up to animation and select save animation preset. I'm gonna name it directional preset. And once you save it, it'll show up in your effects and presets. Now the second layer we're gonna add to transition between clips is a solid layer. And more specifically, this should be a black solid layer. I'm gonna crop it so that it's the same length as the adjustment layer. Go to the properties panel so we can see opacity. At the beginning of the solid, you wanna keyframe the opacity at zero. When the beat hits, you wanna increase this to 75%. And then at the end, you wanna bring it back to zero. We're gonna easy ease and do the same graph formation as before, but we're gonna make these curves even more subtle and less sharp. So this is what they should look like. Now we can just copy these two layers and paste them at the transition between every single clip. This makes velocity editing super efficient. Here's what it looks like with all the transitions added. So now we're gonna work on our text effects for lyrics that you may have at the beginning of your edit. So I just added two text boxes to the beginning of my timeline. The first one is just my first box of text. And then I have a second layer for my second line of text. My favorite text effects are definitely in the blurs category. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorites to use. First, I'm gonna add blur and fade in. I'm gonna space the keyframes more closely together so it's a little bit quicker and also easy ease them. I'm gonna repeat the same for my second text box. And this is what the effect looks like. There's also blur in by word, which if you couldn't tell by the name, it blurs your text in by each individual word. Bullet train in is also a really cool one, but it is a bit quick. So for this one, I actually like to space out the keyframes a little bit more. This one I probably use the most, it's called foggy in. I feel like this one is definitely a classic among editors. And this is the type of blur you'll get from that. My favorite way to segue between the text and the beginning of the edit is with a specific text effect called explain load out. You want to first make your text box longer and also move them so they're on top of your first clip. And then right when your first clip starts is when you want to add it. I think this always looks so cool. For some flickering, you can add an effect called office light. Here's what that flicker looks like. And there's even another flicker effect called fluorescent light. And with this effect, you can even change the opacity of the flicker to make it more intense or less intense. I like to keep it at 50% and this is what that looks like. I also like to add a jitter effect to my text by using turbulent displace. I change the amount to 20 and the size to 15, carry it down on evolution options, then hold down the option key and click on random seed. And now replace this expression with time asterisk 10. You can copy this effect and paste it into your other text layer. And this is what it looks like. Lastly, I like to add some more depth and dimension to my text by using an effect called bevel alpha. Change the edge thickness to five. And now you have text that's a little more defined. 
Although there can be a certain recipe to creating a stylish TikTok style edit, you should also consider adding your own creative touches so that your edit stands out and is uniquely you. This could include using a specific font you like, changing the frame rate of your composition, or even making the graph shapes as slow or fast as you prefer. Try it for yourself while creating your next fan edit in Adobe After Effects.